I explored four face rigging techniques from easy to pro. Here is what we can learn from them. The face has the most intricate and nuanced movements of them all, naturally making it a challenging body part to rig. Between talking and expressions, there is a lot of subtle action going on in the face, as these individual parts need to move and work together seamlessly. This introduces a lot of complex challenges like bone placements, hierarchy and constraints. And not to forget about weight painting, of course. Well, in this video, I like to explore 3D face rigging techniques from easy to pro. Don't think of these as levels to eventually defeat the final boss. Rather, see them as specific methods designed to solve their own puzzle. Rig for what you need, not for what should be possible. What I'm trying to say is rigging should be approached with purpose. All the while considering limits as goals, time, skill, and eventually budget. So aim to craft solutions that align precisely with the demands of the situation. Let's start simple at a single bone. Identify the parts that need to be able to move and create a bone for each part. For this model, we create a head and jaw bone. On top of that, we need to be able to control the eyes, ears and tongue. Also consider what type of movement and deformation is needed. The Muppets don't make mouth shapes like oohs and ahs, they just open and close their mouth. The base of the bone is where the movement originates. For human characters, the jaw hinges from slightly below the ears. Feel it for yourself. In this case, the jaw should hinge from roughly this place. Add a new bone at the position of the 3D cursor. The end of the bone determines the direction and pivot point for new bones in the chain. A bone chain is placed at parts that need to be able to swing and have overlap. For example, the tongue. Usually three is enough. With a single bone in the right position, you can right click and choose subdivide. Then choose the number of cuts down here. Hierarchy refers to parenting. When the parent moves, the child moves with it. But the child can move individually from the parent too. A practical example would be parenting the tongue to the jaw, which in turn is parented to the head bone, just like the ears, eyes and nose would be. To make the rig more practical and animator friendly, consider constraints like targets and rotational limits. Sometimes new bones have to be added to the rig for the constraints to perform correctly. A quick way to add your constraints is to press Ctrl Shift C with the bones selected. The order of the selection is important. You can also add the Track 2 constraint here in the Bone Constraints panel. Now you have to set the target manually in the text fields here. The orientation of the eye deformation bone is misaligned. By default, bones in Blender have a local orientation with the y-axis along the length of the bone. The track axis and the up axis can't be the same. This confuses the constraint and it refuses to do anything. Now the eye bone always looks at the bone here. When naming your bones, make sure to use a suffix of .l or .r. Using symmetrize, we can easily mirror this over to the other side. Use the median point of the two eye control bones to create a master control bone parent both of the individual eye controllers to the master controller. This way we can move both eyes simultaneously or one at a time. The eye's deformation bones are parented to the head. We can do this too for the master controller, only with a slight twist. We use a child off constraint. You see, the difference here is this slider. The influence gives us control over whether the eye should follow the face direction or lock onto a specific target in space. Weights tell the armature which part of the mesh should be influenced by the bones. To create this link, we add a armature modifier to our model. Use Ctrl P and choose either the three of these options. For demonstration purposes, I'll choose empty weights. Over in the object data panel, we can find our vertex groups here. These store information per vertex, like weights. Then switch to weight painting mode in the viewport. You can use tools to draw on the mesh, like these brushes here. You can draw directly on the model. With most things 3D, these can be mirrored using symmetry options. However, I want to start with all the weights assigned to the head vertex group. In edit mode, select the mesh and press the assign button right here. Now the head turned red, confirming we successfully assigned our weights. The result, this head bone moves the entire head. To achieve individual control, we must paint out parts of the weights. Then apply those to other vertex groups instead. I like to use the smooth weights function here. Quite a lot actually, so I added it to my quick menu, which appears when using Q. If we alt-click on the bone, we can rotate it or move it, 
and check the deformation easily from within the weight painting space. Here we see that this exposes a spot I missed while weight painting the lower lip. Rigging balances giving the functionality to the animator and being as efficient as possible. For this example we're mainly focusing on the mouth. The rest is quite similar to what we have seen before. This rig only uses two jaw bones and tongue bones to give the animator most of the mouth shape he or she will need. Make sure the weights isolate the jaw and the lower lip from the head mesh. I usually do a rough weight painting pass and polish this up after the rig is finished. It is not uncommon for animators to already start working with rough weightings like that. Usually the models are linked and will get updated automatically. The reason this jaw is rigged with two bones is for ease of use. The jawbone is constrained to always point at this controller. We use a simple stretch to constraint to achieve this. In the bones constraint panel, add a stretch to constraint from the list. Or use the Ctrl Shift C shortcut from earlier. This works similarly to the track to constraint, only that the endpoint of the bone stretches to the location of the target instead. Now when we move the head, the lips stay in place. Let's do the same thing we did for the master eye controller. Parenting using a child of constraint. This way we can choose how the lower lip behaves. To accommodate for the lack of mouth shapes, this rig uses shape keys. Shape keys are stored variations of the mesh inside the mesh data. These variations can be animated to change the model as needed. The value of the shape keys can be set to a negative value as well. This will push the vertices in the opposite direction. In this case, blending between the U and E shapes. I understand if you don't want to constantly go back and forth between the shape keys panel and your rig. In that case, it could be a good idea to use drivers. In this rig, we use drivers to, well, drive the shape key value by scaling the jaw controller. This expression tells the shape key value to look at the x scale of the jaw controller, which is our variable. Multiply this value by minus 1 to invert the output and then add one or whatever value you need to offset the value by one unit. Easy rigging is a term coined by Daniel Martinez Lara. The key to this setup is bendy bones. Bendy bones work best when set up as a tree bone structure, where the middle bone is the bendy bone. Use a stretch to constraint for the bendy bones to stretch to the last bone. Segments can be added here to this bone. Both of these controllers should not be deforming bones. Let the bendy bone inherit the rotation of both controllers on opposite sides. You can do that here, where it says start handle and end handle. Choose absolute for the rotation type, then pick the corresponding bones here. Using bendy bones, we're gonna outline the important features of the face. Like the eyes and mouth, or like I have done here with the ears of this Muppet, for example. Duplicate this bendy bone setup in edit mode. Offset this duplicate from the original. This makes the next step a little bit easier. Then adjust the placement in pose mode. Now apply the pose to rest pose. Follow the face features as closely as you can. Repeat this process to cover the whole model. If you are smart, you work on one half of the face and you symmetrize once you're done to save some time. Duplicate, pose, apply. Duplicate, pose, apply. Duplicate, pose, apply. This way you can easily import and adjust an existing rig to a new character and keeping all the constraints intact. You can parent the end controller to the start controller or you can try to parent both to a single bone like the head or the jaw for example. Or try something else, parent the start and end points to neighboring bendy bones to create a whole network of bendy bones. The somewhat high density meshes work better for clean deformation when using bendy bones. Use shape keys to accentuate and enhance the expression and push for specific poses. The flexibility while animating is astonishing. The bendy bone curve and roll features are super handy to tweak the deformation. Constantly tweaking these values might be a bit time consuming. That's why you should add them to your pose library once you're happy with them. Double click the pose asset to apply it to your model. Blink! You can see the values change here on the right. Then when you key all the available channels, these channels will be keyed too. Things like these deformation artifacts can happen. This is due to the sharp angle of the bendy bone in pose mode. To fix this, switch the vertex mapping in the bendy bone settings from straight to curved. Advanced rigs combine all the aforementioned techniques to add a lot of functionality and quality while maintaining a smooth performance for the animator. 
Several tools and add-ons will help you create this feature-like rigs, which I will tell you more about in the next section. Almost all of these add-ons aim to enhance the user experience. For example, bone placements is assisted with different methods. Clean deformations are the most important part of rigging. BlendRig 6 uses a pre-weighted model to transfer the weights to your character once they are lined up properly. This add-on has quite an extensive guide to help you get all the functionality out of the rig. Clean deformations doesn't only mean weight painting. This might come after we introduce different levels of control. A set of new bones for the eyelids, with precision controls of smaller areas for example. Or around the mouth, to enable the animator to push for the perfect pose. These bones will have their own weight painting applied and might be parented, constrained or driven by other properties. In professional rigs, shape keys can be automatically triggered to simulate certain behavior. For example, find finger movement or getting clean vowel shapes that are hard to achieve with pose bones. With actions, you automate certain behavior. For example, you can pre-animate a blink as an action. When you do this, use a linear interpolation to not interfere with the actual animation. Then let the action be driven by a bone move, rotation or scale. Professional rigs will sometimes have multiple versions of the same bone setup. For example, when using IK versus FK. Yes, even in the face there can be IK rigs needed. And lastly, although I think it might be a luxury item, a GUI picker is a good thing to include in your rig. While designing clear control widgets is vital, the tremendous amount of controls in some professional character rigs can make the selection process extremely difficult for animators. Having a place where all these controls can be displayed can be very beneficial. Rigging is a specialty that we must appreciate. In this overview we have covered the basics up until all the goodies that a professional rig will feature. Now with your rigs in place it is time to animate and this video might just be the thing to help you with that. As always, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time, ciao!